Yeah. yeah, and you know what we'd like doing lately is we like hitting record, especially when someone says they are nervous about podcasting. Welcome <laughs> to the Protectors Season 4. Excellent co-host, Jess James, is back in a co-host chair. And today we have Lasell. We're going to talk about women shooting, all sorts of cool stuff with guns and empowering things and taking the man out of the variable sometimes. Because sometimes I tell you what, it is tough. Even for me, I get nervous on a range, and I've been shooting for I don't even know. I'm almost 50, so a long time. So uh, let's talk. Let's Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm super excited to have you. Thank you, Jason and Jess. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm super nervous. And then you hit that record button. So we'll, we'll just go from here. The best thing in the world is just hit record. There's a company out there called <laughs> Think Media. And I'm always one of these people that I always have to figure out what the hell am I doing. And I go and I check out Think Media. And one of their logos is just hit record. I'm like, you know what? When we start talking before the show and good conversation starts coming out, you just got to hit record. Yeah, just got to hit record. That's actually really beautiful. Something. You know what, LaSalle? I've been following you on social media for a while, and I do like your post a lot. And I think I would like the fact that if someone jumps into your, your messages or your DMs, you put them on blast for <laughs> oh my God. No, no, just because it's like, listen, you don't have to be X anything to be an yeah. incredible instructor. You don't have to be. Absolutely. Um, and, and if anything, me having these diverse, weird backgrounds in the military, and I've been, I've been in like six or seven different agencies. I've learned a million different things, but I stick to what I know. And I yeah. train to what I know and what I'm comfortable in. And you, you jump into it and you teach people what you know and how you know, and you become professional and proficient in it. So let's jump into how did you get into this game? And it, this is kind of one of those things where like you were four years old and your dad handed you the gun. And you're like, boom, you're like shooting. <laughs> I'm a natural. Here it a goes. Natural. Um, no, it, I, I, I don't have a great um, backstory of why I got into the 2A um, community, which I honestly don't like the community itself. It's very hard and it's very competitive and it's a lot of cancel cancel culture right especially when the, you don't come from a certain background um like you jason like i don't have i'm not ex leo i'm not ex military i'm none of that um that being said you can have all that background and also not know how to teach you can do some amazing things but you can't simplify it for another student to learn um, and, and which is okay. You know, you just have to kind of stay in your lane and, you know, broad out and, you know, do your demonstrations and everything. But some people have weak points. Some people ha don't have that or like strong points. However, with me, without any of that background as a kid, I did not have a good upbringing. Um, pretty, pretty rough. And then when I got in my preteens, I was sexually assaulted inside the household um my mom was going through cancer all this stuff it's kind of weird to talk about like I guess I haven't really talked about this stuff but um I mean I have briefly but yeah so my mom was going through cancer she was at a cancer treatment facility and it was just me in that in the household along with my stepdad and my stepbrother at the at the time and you know it, there's a there was a lot of grooming process these were men that i knew my entire life i trusted with everything that i had um they were my family that was my 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 dad basically um but unfortunately that's not how predators minds work there's a lot of grooming if you for for instance um Epstein case, right? We saw that with, with grooming and everything else. People don't really put it in perspective or they don't think it's real. But yeah, I was groomed all the way up until preteen. So um, I had, he attempted to rape me. I luckily, it was not successful. I slept with a knife because I knew exactly what was going to happen. 
Um, and then unfortunately, a short time later, my stepbrother, who was in his, you know, late twenties, tried to do the same thing. So I was like, my mom came back from her tr cancer treatment facility. I, you know, told her I'm out of here. You can stay or leave, but I'm gone. And I was 16 at this point. And we moved to Arizona, like back to Arizona. She came with me. Um, it was really hard for her to under like she didn't want to believe it. Um, I had I grew up in a very small town, so when stuff when stuff starts happening, it's all over town, right? Um, I got blamed for a lot of it. I didn't understand. Um, my mom actually blamed me for a lot of it at first because I don't think she wanted to understand. And I felt just crushed. Like no one believed me. My, my siblings even, you know, they were out of the household. Um, my sister has her own story, but I can't speak to her on her behalf. But when I left, um, I just started fucking up all kinds. Oh, am I allowed to, am I allowed to cuss in here? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. But no, I started fucking up all kinds because I had trauma. My mom didn't help me through that trauma and that has stuck with me forever. Um, so I entered into chaos, like all my relationships from there on out, like it was just very normal to me. Um, so I would go through domestic violence cases and just a heap of things and cling on to these men that I knew wouldn't treat me right. And, but I, I clung on for dear life. So when people would be like, I don't see how you can just leave. It wasn't an option in my brain because I never learned how trauma affects your brain and all of that. Um, eventually I had uh, my first child and I went in and I got, you know, help because I was like, I can't keep doing this shit to myself. Like I'm, I'm a mom now. I want my son to, well, sons now to look at a man and say, that's how I want to treat a woman, or that's how I want my mom to be treated. And I, you know, uh, that's the only thing that helped me. So, and yes, I grew up with guns and everything else, but then I, you know, was just, I would, would shoot just for fun or here and there. Well, and you know, then, I gotta, I gotta put you on pause right there. Cause I am so fucking enraged right now because oh. you know, you've probably followed my social media. I'm very passionate about trafficking, especially now domestic trafficking yes. and hearing yeah. about when I I've heard this story so many times where people don't mm -hmm. fucking believe the victim yeah. and they don't believe that it's real, especially parents, especially close ones that could never happen here. We live in a small town with this and that. And, they blame that's like you. the worst the worst yeah um and growing up on the border i mean i've seen it firsthand from uh, like looking back i'm like wow like i was a fucking idiot because i was just so oblivious to my surroundings and what was going on and it's very real uh very real and now i'm actually pretty involved within you know the the helping i i actually help one girl who I went to school with who was trafficked and she was trafficked in Las Vegas and into prostitution. I actually had her a long time ago on a live and it was rough. It was a rough live. Um, but it's crazy. I mean, people that I knew, I didn't know what was going on because you know, you're just naive. And if you don't know what to look for, it's very easy to just skim across, yeah. especially here in Arizona. Oh, wow. Yeah. Especially that's a huge hub, but Lizelle, I just want to say thank you so much for just sharing that with us. And you are mm -hmm. so strong and you are just a walking example of how people try to diminish trauma or abuse that it can happen yeah. within your own home under your own roof yeah. very subtly. And, and that's where it thrives. So if we have these hard conversations, we can pick up on these small little tactics that build up over time, just like how you were groomed over time. That mm -hmm. takes a sick, manipulative, you know, motherfucker yeah. to do that. So when we have yeah. those talks, instead of, instead of trying to deny the survivor's experience, why don't you just listen? People yes. just need to listen. Just and, listen. That's where and I understand each other. 
Yep, I understand the emotions, like hearing it and just being angry and not wanting to believe it. But I tell people all the time, um, yes, trafficking is very real, but it's for, it's usually, it's not going to be like some guy that comes and kidnaps you off the street. Yes, that does happen. I'm not denying that. But these are people that we know, um, usually family members, um, very close friends, neighbors that are around you. Um, I also mentioned like um, sex, like, uh, sexual predators, for instance, with children, they're usually school teachers. They're in some sort of CPS, for instance, um, the CPS cases, like there is, it's a fucking mess. The foster system, um, it's disgusting. It, it really grosses me out. And unfortunately, not a lot of people want to believe it still, no, which is no, so and that's, weird. I, I, you know, I've been in LEO for 22 years. I worked so much international shit and a bunch of other different stuff until the past three or four years. I didn't know exactly how much was going on domestically and yeah. about the grooming, about this social media stuff and yeah. hit, getting into teens DMS and young girls DMS because primarily it is a lot of young girls in the familial, the familial trafficking, the uncles, yeah. the cousins, everybody who has interaction with a child and it's going on everywhere. And it's not like big cities. It's not this. It's not that. And people, I one thing that's been bothering me is that word trafficking, because you do equate it with everything from labor trafficking to people coming across the border, trafficking narcotics and everything. It's it is commercialized rape. It is yep. rape. It is yep. it is industrialized, commercialized or whatever rape. You may not be getting everything monetary out of it, but it's just it's rape. And it's just it's just oh man. This is and when you brought up of the fact that you're training and you don't have the background, but you are taking the power back. The 2A community should embrace people like you. Embrace I, people who I agree. are like, yeah. I agree. Um, unfortunately, with the 2A community, they it's like very competitive, but we all have something to offer. There's plenty of people for literally all of us. Um, and it's weird. Social media is very odd. Um, I jumped into this because of my background, my passion, like helping women, like hearing them. I would always, you know, I would always be the only girl, um, at shoots and then I'd be nervous and like, same with like getting my certs. I was the only girl and like, it was just weird. You know, it makes you kind of like, I was, I'm not uncomfortable, but you know, like it makes you more nervous. And then I realized girls literally weren't going to classes because of them feeling how like, you know, it not confident. They don't want to see anyone or they don't want anyone to see them shooting um, just because, you know, and even even new shooters, females just to get into my class. You know, they're like, I'm really nervous. I'm like, trust me, we're we're good, you know, until they start talking. So they're like, oh, this girl's fucking crazy. Like, I like her a lot, you know, make, make, I make them feel comfortable no matter what. Um, and I also don't have that whole, like, ex-Marine, like, op, like, you know, like, I'm not a yeah. badass. I'm not, like, I'm not tacked out on the range. If you've seen my horrific range photos, I'm usually in some <laughs> bullshit leggings with some, mismatched high socks you know like i'm just your average person and i i love it i don't know but but with I mean, social media you're out there trying you're out there doing yeah. the damn yeah. thing it's very easy to judge and critique from the other side or on the couch yeah. really yeah so yeah exactly for the ladies who who don't feel comfortable yet just acknowledge that hey you you are admitting that you want to learn something you want to get better and yep. with the two-way community, it's like, hey, we can all learn from each other. We're not all experts. Like, again, drop your mm -hmm. ego and just learn and just listen. Because, um, yeah. you know, we can all be, you know, up our butt sometimes. But uh, where do you where yeah. do you get the growth? Where do you get the knowledge? Where do you expand? Exactly. You know? And you have to branch out to other people. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know nearly as much as I want to. And I do not claim that. Like, that's one thing I do not do. But you'll see on social media, people claim all this stuff. And if you don't claim it, then you're canceled. Like it's the weirdest thing. Um, and, and when you have a large following, you can fucking say anything to followers and they're going to believe it. Like, 
it's crazy. It, it's weird. I had a bunch of um, men in my DMs coming at me in hot because I got blasted on social media from a disgruntled ex. Like, come on, give me a break, you fucking white knights, you know? Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah. But that's just, that's the day we live in. Um, unfortunately, that's why you don't see me posting a lot of like content anymore. Um, I'm more of the doer, like outside of social media. And I hate that because I want to use my platform to, you know, broaden, but it's also when you, you take on a risk, when, once you broaden, a lot of people think that they can form these opinions about you. They don't even know you. And that's, that's what makes it interesting. You think you know someone through a screen or a, through a photo, and then all of a sudden you get to form an opinion about that person. And I'm like, there's very healthy assumptions that uh, keep us from learning, from evolving, from getting better. It's, it, it, they're like blinders, honestly. And yeah. I, I don't like how folks try to make shooting or firearms um, or the two way community just a, a, a man, a male thing, a masculine thing. It's totally you know, who are the number one targets? <laughs> Women. So <laughs> come on, girl, like get strapped, like and get. Get and your nails done to match, like you know. So maybe I don't feel like like, just as much as men. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I used to feel like that, like this is a man's world, and I guess it kind of is. Um, I don't feel like that anymore. Like I truly do not like move the fuck over because here I come. You know, like that. That's just how I feel. But I also shoot and partner with a lot of men that do not make it me feel any different than them which is great. And that's hard to find. So I truly, truly appreciate my support system who has believed in me and just have kept me going. Um, big text ordinance. I love shopping at big text ordinance. You know why they have an outstanding customer experience. And what do I mean by that? That's one of their principles. They want you to go there Check out their inventory. Their live inventory, meaning if it's on their site and it says it's there, it is there. They're not shipping from somewhere else. They are, have it in stock in their warehouse ready to go. To me, that is outstanding. That is absolutely outstanding because when I'm doing a build, when I need a part, when I need anything, I kind of want to have it now. I don't know that maybe it's this Amazon generation or whatever, but I want to have that product as soon as I can. Whether it's finishing up a build or whether it's buying just a new part or new anything, magazines through anything, I want to have it and I want to have good communication when I'm having it. So if I order it, big text is sending me an email. And they're going to say, hey, you know what? It's on its way. And I guarantee you it's going to be there as soon as they can get it to me. So check out big text. They are really doing big things because they're big text. <laughs> so check out big text ordinance. Excellent, excellent, excellent customer experience. Yeah. No, I, I think the girls just have their clicks. It's almost kind of like high school. But but at the same time, uh, there's like a fuck ton of females that are super supportive that I love too. Uh, but they're, you know, you know, so I think girls just guys, you know, it's, you know, school. listen, social media is like high school. Yes. You know, that's yeah. why I, I don't, I don't chase clout. And I don't, you know, if you look at my guest list, it's, I just, I talk to people I want to talk to. Yeah. But there are like the certain same people over and over and over again that are like the quote unquote experts of everything that has to do with guns and shooting. And I'm like, come on, man. You know, when I, when I got my, so when this whole COVID shit happened, I, I wanted to start teaching people how to shoot locally. Cause I'm right out right here in Virginia outside of DC. So I go in order for uh, me to teach CCW here and basic pistol and shit, I had to get an NRA cert. So when I went to the, basic nra class it was like you know old people young people anything <laughs> yeah. you could imagine it wasn't like you know john rambo in there and then when i went to <laughs> my instructor for the actual instructor course was a female jody Mackey. she's awesome she's coming on in a couple weeks had a website girl on fire and i'm like you know what I i'm gonna go to her she seems personable and everything and i learned so much from her and i've been i'm one of those guys who's been shooting forever but it's like i learned so much for her about just basic shooting and patience and how to work with people on the range and, and yeah. stuff like that. And I was like, wow, I'm like, it doesn't, I don't care about your pedigree. 
because just because you're former something doesn't mean you are a former instructor, someone who can Correct. work with people. It is a different dynamic working with someone who's never picked up a pistol in their life. And then all of a sudden they're putting it down range. And if you're not a good instructor, there's going to be damage to human life or something. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, like with me, I, for the most part, I've just learned that like, cause I wanted to keep going up and doing more advanced and more advanced classes, which I do. Um, however, I've just kind of accepted the fact that I specialize in new shooters because they feel a lot there, you know, word of mouth has gotten out there. They feel comfortable. Um, and luckily with those new shooters though, they can be with me from the beginning until like moving up. And I, I freaking love that. Like, that's what makes my job worth it. Um, however, I've worked with everyone. I've worked with like regular civilians like myself or in cops and ex-military and have gotten to train with all those guys or have actually been been an instructor with those guys and I'm super honored. Um, so it's not just women that I train, but it's, I would say a good 90%, you know, because a lot of men don't want to come to like a class where it's just a ton of females. I'm like, yeah, so switch that mentality around and think how we feel, you know? Um, yeah. So I, I, I really like that. I like that. Um, but also I feel like men and women just shouldn't limit themselves to yeah, absolutely. An experience because of the gender um, imbalance. Yeah. Just put yourself out there, get that knowledge, get that training. And you're going to walk away be like, Oh my gosh, what? I was holding myself back this whole time. I um, know. Yeah, and I, think, I think also, again, just like be, if you're going out there, be willing to learn and brush up on things and also like smooth out whatever edges, like you, you could be the best shot out there, but that's not the point. It's not, it's not just about practicing like your aim and things. There's so many other things that come into play. Yeah. So to diminish a an experience or a class. Yeah. Is, yeah. is like, you're holding yourself back from being more proficient in every single way, shape or form. So, yeah. um, yeah, I just see like, I'm, I'm seeing like folks that want to get out there, just don't limit yourself with your inner, inner monologue. Just get out yeah. there and just. And, and I do, I do understand why women do feel comfortable with a female sometimes versus male because of a background. Like I have, I actually, I deal with a lot of women who have been in DV cases or just come to me like, Hey, I'm in a situation. What did you do? Or the, there's, they've been sexually assaulted and they're still timid um, with men. However, like I always tell them, I'm like, Hey, like not all men are like this. You know, they're actually way more men out there that are good than bad. Um, and, and I truly believe that like, uh, I don't know. Men are kind of emotional little creatures that they, they don't show, but they're a lot more emotional than I am. I'll tell you that much. And they mean well, like majority of them, I truly. Why, you know what? Why? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Chief. <laughs> no, yeah. and I, I really didn't know that about your background, you know, because you can't really tell what's going on with someone on social media. You can kind of see once in a while, like, like Jess. We only share you know, what we you, want to, right? Exactly. And you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have yeah. to share with like public, but something like this, I think this is very good for the audience out there who's like, you know what? That shit is real. This is happening to me. I could go and get trained and, and take some of my power back and feel a sense of security and yeah. not have to feel like going into a gun shop and going, having the, the crusty old guy. Oh, you're a female. Here's a 38 special. Snub. <laughs> it's like, come on, bro. You'll, you'll run into them, but you just got to give it right back to him. Like, Hey, fuck you, sir. Like I'm not taking that. Um, no, but the, the big part, of me getting into the firearms training and industry is seeing that these girls have really a, not just girls, but a lot of people, females specifically in my position or were in my position, have a really big victim mentality, meaning they don't want to heal. They want to stay exactly where they're at. They, it's hard to grow and it's hard to forgive. Like it is the hardest shit you will ever do in your life. And if I stayed where I was at in the victim mentality, I would 
I would probably be dead, honestly. Like I had to grow. I either I had to move or I had to get the fuck out of my own way. So that's what I tell females all the time um, who, you know, come to class. I just started partnering with a organization, a war party movement. I don't know if you guys follow them. They are amazing. And we actually, they do a lot of things um, for the vulnerable, but mostly for um, native women, which I love. And we actually did their very, very first firearm course with me up in Phoenix. And I was uh, so excited and there was so much support around that. Um, yeah, I just loved helping those women specifically. Um, Tucson is like number four for missing native women yep. in the country. So it's, it's pretty bad, like honestly, but I, I'm just so thankful I get to do that. I, I get to do that kind of stuff. More thankful that people trust me with other women like hey go to her she'll take care of you like that's what i appreciate unfortunately with social media i don't appreciate people devaluing that you know what i mean i'm like i fucking do so much then teach a tactics class okay like i don't teach tactics i teach real life shit that's gonna might happen to you you know like i'm helping protect you and them and they're they just walk out confident as shit and they're like, bring it on. You know, I always pray for all of my students, you know, to never have to use their firearm. But yeah, they'll be golden. But if they're not trained and they go to use that firearm, that's when the shit really hits the fan. Absolutely. So I, I tell everybody, I'm like, even if you go to one train and go to the next train, like you said, you're you follow them up the path of of learning yeah. to not it's it's a tool, but it's one you can enjoy. And me, yeah. I love shooting. I I love putting little holes in paper, and I love shooting everything. I love building guns. I love it's like an art. It's like a therapy to me now, and that's why I love talking to people that are passionate about training others. So then, when they do see a gun, they're not so scared of it. So many mm-hmm. people on both. You know what? You don't have to be Democrat, Republican, or anything anymore. No. It's at ninety four percent. The what? So the ninety four percent increase in gun sales last year. Past Which year and a half, awesome. it's crazy. Let's let's go, Brandon. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I have had conservatives come after me for teaching liberals and Democrats guns about like gun training. Literally coming after me, saying that I shouldn't. I'm like, you can go fuck yourself. I'm like, do mm-hmm. I look conservative? Like maybe because of the firearm industry puts that label yeah. on me, but I am literally nothing. You know, I just have my own damn opinion on things. And sometimes my opinion changes. So mm-hmm. I label myself with nothing. Um, yeah, it's weird. It, it's, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to say about it. Yeah. I mean, all I'm going to say is that um, the right to carry the right to bear arms is a constitutional thing. Why yes. are you throwing yeah. in certain groups to limit that? Like, no, like mm-hmm. every American exactly. should and can. And if you feel so empowered to, then do it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. And, no, and I, I, exactly. I don't appreciate those blinders. No, it's very hypocritical. Um, and I can be, I can be a hypocrite sometimes. I think we all can, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, you but, at least but, you acknowledge it. You admit when you're wrong. You, exactly. you continue the dialogue not, instead of running. And I yeah. Don't know. yeah, no, it, it's a weird, it's a weird industry, but that's why, you know, I just kind of keep my head down low and just keep trucking, doing what I do and reaching more women and um, just progressing even within myself, you know? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I love the industry as much as I talk shit on it on this podcast. <laughs> I listen, do love it. Listen, if you're not talking shit about something, you don't like it. It's the same way that's with people. True. If I'm not talking shit about you, there's something wrong. That's but, true. But, yeah, it's weird. It's the truth. Mm-hmm. LaSalle, I really appreciate you coming on. I really didn't know about your backstory, and I really, really thank you for sharing that. And maybe yeah. like it'll spark something. And I always tell people, get involved locally. It doesn't yeah. have to be like you don't have to run for office or do anything. Get a hold of whoever is in charge in your town and say, what are we doing about human trafficking? What are we doing about domestic violence? 
what are we doing about the underrepresented communities like the native american women and that, i really do want to talk to them and have them on the show because i want to know about that stuff jeremiah is amazing um i did a podcast with him i'm not even going to say the podcast because i i i listened to it and i was like wow i sound like an idiot so i'm not going to mention that um but he is amazing he, yeah he's he's a great guy um his wife is super cool the the program itself i respect the shit out of um and i'm honored to be even part of it you know so there's a lot of stuff you know that goes in the the works with the mess of a country that we we have and a, a lot of it being sex trafficking and um dv cases that don't get resolved i mean you you were ex-cop you, you know how that shit mm -hmm. goes like sometimes it can be nothing and then sometimes it can be really traumatic and then the victim keeps going back and back and yeah. they end up being dead and it's just a hard thing to break so i really try to focus on the mentality of it because that's your solution you like like jason was saying like you were saying um get involved within your community change starts within your community go and talk to your neighbors i know we don't do that anymore it's frowned upon but <laughs> go talk to them you know even if you get a door slammed in the face like just be involved know what to look mm -hmm. for yeah at least try i feel like there's no there's no trying anymore people don't put themselves out there so uh Lizelle, it's so awesome to meet another strong woman that you know is trying to break away from that mentor meant like victim mentality and stepping into a survivor and a sassy woman at that too so okay. you keep trucking you keep teaching and you keep putting yourself out there because i think you're just the change that we need to see in the community thank you what is your instagram handle or else I'm <laughs> it's uh, Jesse James. I'll uh, put it in the chat. But yeah, hit me up, girl. Yeah, I will. I will. And then if you guys are in Arizona, desertpatriottraining.com. I gotta put that little promo in there. Oh, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna go in the comments and everything. Else <laughs> and everybody find it. Follow. We'll put everywhere yeah. all the IGs and everything. But Lasalle, thank yeah. you. All right, Jason.